Hey guys, thanks for being here. So I know the title of this message can be a little maybe challenging to understand, but bear with me for a minute. I, it's something that has kind of recurringly, something that I've come into contact with around people who are in the church, which is the belief that they were born Christians, the belief that they always had a relationship to the Lord. And oftentimes when I would start to like unpack that with them, it was generally like more of like a general awareness that God existed and the God that they were referencing was Jesus, but it wasn't this actual understanding of salvation, of repentance, of, of like what it, like even just the nature of man. And so as I would like have that conversation with people and, and like break that down and say like, okay, so like kind of walk me through what your experience was like. Oh, like I grew up in the church, always believed in God, always, always a Christian. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so what is a Christian in your eyes? Oh, like I believe in Jesus. Okay. So you have like a general awareness of him. And do you understand like the, like that we're born in sin? You know, like, do you understand that like the origin of it in gen? Like, do you, when you, when you started to unpack that stuff, it started to become very clear that there was actually like not really a grasp of that. Sometimes there was. Like later on, they started to kind of get a better sense of that. But in some cases, they still kind of wanted their life to seem like it had the fluidity of like Christianity their whole life. And I think to some degree, we really don't do ourselves a service in that because number one, you you weren't really operating or living or even had come into a general awareness of Christ as Lord and Savior. That didn't actually happen. But because you were in and out of the church, you believe that made you a Christian and it didn't. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So I felt like it would be important then to just do a message about this because I don't know how many people still hold that belief. Uh, I know I've met a number of them and I don't know if any of them are listening to these videos. So I also wanted to just do kind of a discussion a little bit around it, which is to say that. I guess to kind of break down, like, not just like, what is salvation, but like, what is the actual like process? Like, so if, if I've already grown up in the church and I've already been surrounded by people who are professing Christians, like, so how does that make me different than if I'm still in the church? And, you know, I, I kind of think that God exists and I, I know we call God Jesus. And so, so what is that? So I think the, the fundamental piece to start with is just like, why do we need a Lord and Savior? Like, why do you need one? If you were, if you're already born into it, and if you never, if you never really lived or operated outside of the will of God, then like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, where was the starting point? So at a month old, you recognize the Lord? No, just because you were baptized as a baby, which I'm not going into that. Um, I've said it indirectly. I'll say it very clearly now. I do not support the Catholic faith in any respect of the word, and I would not constitute them as having an understanding of the gospel, doesn't mean that there aren't people within the faith who maybe have variations within understanding. I would I would not dismiss that completely and say that maybe there are some who don't hold to like just the, the traditions and the orthodox and the beliefs of like Catholicism in general. However, in general, I would not constitute that as somebody who has actual faith in Christ and an understanding of the gospel. It's a different gospel is how I would constitute it. You can put your comments down, down, but it's still, it's still, that's where I stand on that issue. So why do we need a savior? If I was born into the church and I always believed in God, why do I need a savior? Right? Like, so then this is when we can go back and we look at Genesis and we look at the fallen nature of man. We look at Adam and Eve coming out of relationship to God based on the original sin, right? So in taking the apple or the fruit, we don't have specifics around that, but taking the fruit that they were forbidden to eat to eat, and consuming it, breaking the relationship with God based on that, if you eat of this, you will surely die. This happening, the spiritual death that took place, the death of the relationship, like the, the separation with God, 
all of this stuff leading us to the point of now coming into the New Testament, Jesus living a perfect life, a life we could not live in any scope of the word because he lived perfectly. He was without sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. So in the Old Testament, we have sacrifices of animals. In the New Testament, what separates it, what what creates that new line of, of a new covenant is that Christ was the sacrifice for us. So when we put our faith in Christ, and it doesn't just mean I'm like, okay, he's God. Why? Like, why did he die? Why did he come to the earth? What was the purpose of his ministry? If I don't understand any of these things, and I'm just like, Christ is Lord, is do I actually understand what that means or why that even exists? I don't understand any of it. I'm just saying it because someone's telling me to say it. I have to have an actual understanding. What? How am I re- relating to Christ as Lord? There has to be some understanding of there. And if you don't understand why Christ had to live the perfect life and die as a sacrifice. So if I don't recognize him as the perfect sacrifice in order for God's wrath to be poured out on him, which was to really create justice in the fact that we were living out of um, out of relationship with God in the way that we were intended to. So then when I understand that he is ultimately like his sacrifice brings me now when I put my faith in him and I acknowledge my sin, I have to repent. I'm going to put a whole bunch of scriptures in the comments section, just so you can use that as reference points. So there will be like no confusion and I will fully specify. But when I understand that because of the original sin, I'm born into sin, which means I didn't come into this world as a faithful believer. No, I came in as a sinner and I have to put my faith in Christ. And I have to say, I understand that he is Lord of my life. I repent of the sins that I have have engaged in so that I can accept him as Lord and Savior and move forward in my new relationship with him. The good news of the gospel is that when I put my faith in Christ, Christ alone, I will be saved. It's great news, but it is something that there has to be a level of awareness. Do I understand why I believe Christ is Lord? Is there an understanding that I cannot just lose my salvation like this because I've put my faith in? In Christ, oftentimes that doesn't happen. And instead, what is seems to be prevalent, and I'm not sure if it's singularly people who come from the Catholic faith. I don't want to assume that. Sometimes it seems like there's some variation in there. But what often seems to happen is that people come from potentially the Catholic faith. They are baptized as a baby. They're confirmed at whatever age they're intended to be confirmed in. And they walk through life. And there's like still zero real fundamental understanding or awareness of like their part in it they just no I've just been I've just been living as a Christian my whole life and it's like where where is the example of this in scripture that we see that anybody was was born into it that nobody had a actual point of conversion like that that they just didn't have any conversation there was it was just like yeah do you believe this okay you're in (laughs) do you like why do you need to be in do you understand the gospel do you understand the good news do you understand who christ is do you understand why we need him like what is the point of having a lord and savior if we don't even have any type of understanding that we need it too so i know sometimes it can seem very I don't know, appealing to just kind of profess to have a religion, a faith based on the fact that I've grown up in the church, I've grown up around God or my parents reference God that does not put you in relationship to him. It doesn't. There's there's legitimately a point of repentance that there has to come to and then an understanding of why I need a savior. 
And then when I put my faith in Christ, that exchange, then there's there's baptism. We're not saved through baptism. However, that is still part of the process. That's still referenced in various ways. Sacrament, a, a like a, a public declaration before others, but it's also a commandment. We are commanded to be baptized. Are we commanded to be baptized before the declaration or an understanding? No. And there's no model of that. And if anybody, if there is anybody in the entire world who could have had that process happen, who could, if there's anybody who could say they were a Christian as a baby, it would be Christ. And yet we do not see that as an example. We see Christ baptized at the beginning of his ministry at 30. So. My encouragement to you, if this is maybe a belief system or this is something that you've held for a long time and you're still kind of like confused about that process, I'm going to link information below. And I would encourage you perhaps to seek an actual church that can walk you through this process more actively. That was something that I often ended up doing would be either referencing people to attend a particular church or kind of walking through that process with them and saying like, okay, so do you understand why this would not be constituted as salvation? And just kind of going through that and taking time to answer questions. So if that's where you are, I would advise you to seek out a, ch a church, not a Catholic church, <laughs> Protestant church, um, there are a bunch of different denominations I can put in there, but I'm separating that for an intended purpose because I'm not going to support their their beliefs and their theology. And it, it seems to have created a really distinct amount of confusion for people that when they are living around it, that suddenly that means that everything is kosher and now they are saved. And oftentimes those are the people who I think are probably the most deceived out of all of them. And oftentimes the ones who are in no way demonstrating or living a life of Christ, but still professing it oftentimes based on false teaching, a different gospel. So hopefully this can help dispel some of that if you have grown up in that. It doesn't mean that this is like a point of condemnation for you either. I want to be very clear there are many different types of false teaching that are out there. I came from the Islamic faith. And so that is obviously extraordinarily <laughs> idolatry and false teaching there, right? So this is not a, a point of condemnation where I'm wagging my finger at you and telling you you're a bad, evil person because you believe wrongly. This is saying we, I personally don't want you to live in deception. And sometimes because people want to tiptoe around these issues, they're not going to explicitly state it. So here I am stating it. I pray the Lord would lead you in understanding. And I pray that um, if you are seeking to actually, if you don't know Christ and you're actually seeking for resources around that, please feel free to comment below and we'll reach out to you. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.